Praise the Lord, my sisters and brothers. I'm your sister in Christ, Michelle Rice. And this is the prayer connection where you make a connection with God. Yes, this is now the prayer connection where you make a connection with heaven. Now, this show is designed to build you up, to strengthen you, and to encourage you to go into another level in your prayer life. Yes, it's designed by God to catapult you and to launch you forward to another level in your prayer life. And we know that it's all done by our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Thank you, Lord God. Hallelujah. Father God, we bless you this morning, oh God. We bless you this afternoon, Lord God. We bless you this evening, oh God, in the name of Jesus. As we come together to pray today, God, we give you all the glory. Father God, we give you all the praise. We give you all the worship, oh God. Hallelujah. We bless you, Lord God. We bless your holy name. Because you are a holy, holy God, God. We bless you, Lord God. We praise you. We worship you in spirit and in truth, Father God. For you seek such to worship you, Lord God. You are worthy to be praised. You are worthy to be thanked, God. You are worthy to be worshipped. You are worthy, God. Hallelujah. You are worthy to be magnified. You are worthy to be adored. You are worthy to be lifted up, God. You are worthy to be extolled. You are worthy to be exalted, God. You are worthy. Oh, God, we serve a worthy God. Hallelujah. And we come in boldly to the throne of grace today. We come in boldly to the throne of grace today. We come in boldly to the throne of grace today to obtain mercy and find grace to help God. Your people are in need. We are in need, oh God. We are in need of a touch of your spirit, God, in the name of Jesus. Father God, we thank you. We praise you. You say you've given us authority over all the powers of the enemy. And nothing by any means will hurt us, oh God. So we come against the spirit of depression today. We come against you, Satan. We ain't going to sugarcoat it. We're not going to drag it on. We're not going to lollygag. We're coming after you today in the name of Jesus. We come against the spirit of oppression, depression, sadness, sorrow, and grief. We come against it in the name of Jesus. My Bible says, whatever we bind on earth shall be bound in heaven. Whatever we loose on earth shall be loose in heaven. We bind you, Satan. I command you to loose everyone that's listening today. Loose and let them go in the name of Jesus. Loose that woman that's listening right now. I don't know your name today, but God says, if you listen to today and this and this situation is in, is in your house, God says, I'm coming to your house today. God says, I'm coming to your house with deliverance and they're delivering you from the spirit of oppression, depression, sadness, and sorrow and grief. We bind you, said you have no authority in the name of Jesus. The joy of the Lord will be our strength. We command you to loose our sons, loose our daughters, loose our nieces, loose our nephews right now. Loosen from the grip, grip of that old spirit of oppression and depression. Suppression, repression, oppression, depression. We coming against all of you today, Satan, in the name of Jesus. We have the victory in the Jesus name. Thanks be unto God who always give us the victory, always cause us to triumph in Christ Jesus. I come against that melancholy spirit in the name of Jesus. I command you to loose that one that's listening right now. Loose him and let him go. Loose his son. Loose his daughter in the name of Jesus. Loose that husband. Loose that wife in the name of Jesus. Loose our cousins. Loose our nieces. Loose our nephews. Loose him and let him go in the name of Jesus. Loose our household in the name of Jesus. We will operate in the joy of the Lord. The joy of the Lord will be our strength in this season and time in the name of Jesus. We take authority even in the spirits that's in the atmosphere. The spirit that comes to your home and want to lodge there and live with you in your own house. Satan, and today we evict you in the name of Jesus. We evict every unclean spirit of depression. We evict you from their home right now. We evict you in the name of Jesus Christ. We don't give you a three-day notice. We say you're going now in the name of Jesus, right now in the name of Jesus, by the blood of Jesus, by the word of God, by the anointing of God in the name of Jesus. The anointing is the burden-removing, burden-destroying power of God. 
to you right now. The anointing is removing the spirit of depression off of your spirit, off of your soul. The anointing removes depression, destroys depression. The anointing removes depression and destroys depression because the anointing is the burden removing yoke destroying power of God. The Spirit of the Lord God is coming into your home right where you at. You might be driving down the street. You might be in your home. You might be in your office. But the anointing is removing depression and destroying depression because the anointing is the burden removing yoke destroying power of God. Even our atmosphere is going to shift. God letting you know that there's a shifting in your atmosphere. Where there was darkness, where there was depression, where there was deep oppression, where there was sadness, sorrow, and grief. The very atmosphere is being called, is being made to bow down to the name of Jesus Christ. I take authority on the atmosphere. We have authority in the atmospheric realms. We have authority in the atmosphere. We take authority over the spirit of uh, the, 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 the spirit of oppression, depression, oppression, suppression in the atmosphere. And we decree and declare that your atmosphere is being filled with the glory of God. Those of you, if you're listening today, this is prayers for you. If you're listening today, it's prayer for you and your family. God is saying, I'm coming in today and I'm bringing my joy bang. I'm being a joy bang. He's going to bang you with joy in the name of Jesus. He destroys the prince of the power of the air. The one that manifests itself in the airways, manifests itself in the atmosphere. In Jesus' mighty name, we pray. Oh God, I thank God. He said that the joy of the Lord will be your strength. A merry heart will do you good like a medicine. You will rejoice in the Lord always. And again, I say rejoice in the mighty name of Jesus. You might sow in tears, but you're going to reap in joy. We may endure for the night, but God said joy is coming in the morning. It's morning season for you right now. Morning time. It's morning time. It's time for you to rejoice. That season of oppression is over. That season of depression, oppression, and sadness, and so is over. God said your season of joy has come to you now. Joy has come to your house. In the mighty name of Jesus. In the mighty name of Jesus. And you know, we all have at one point or time come into a place and found ourselves in a pit of oppression, found ourselves in a tomb, so to speak, of oppression. Many of us, I'm, I'm, I can almost say all of us, at one point in your life, you have found yourself in a cave of depression. A prison house of depression. You have found yourself in a jail house of oppression. One point in your life, and it might be right now, you have found yourself trapped in darkness. Found yourself in a pit. Found yourself in a tomb of depression. And the anointed, powerful prophet Elijah was no exception. He found himself in a cave of depression. You see, Elijah, he had just killed 450 prophets of Baal. He, he was a powerful man that got anointed. He killed 450 prophets of Baal. In the scripture, as I studied, so he also killed 400 prophets of the goddess Asherah. These prophets ate at Queen Jezebel's table. He had just killed all these prophets, did a supernatural work. He did, but he found himself in a cave of depression when Jezebel said, you know what? You kill my prophets, I'm coming after you, Elijah. And Elijah fled for his life. He ran from this woman. He ran from Jezebel and he found himself in a cave. And I don't understand how at one point, he, I mean, he did miraculous. He did a miraculous destruction of the prophets of Baal. I mean, miraculous. But he was running from one woman. But you know, that's what fear will do to you. Fear will dull your senses of who you are. He had no need to fear Jezebel because he had he proved that God was God. He proved that he was had the power of God on his life, working in miracle signs and he proved that he had authority. But see, fear, fear will dull your senses to who you really are in Christ. Fear will dull you to 
to who you are in Christ. So he just ran for his life and found himself in a cave. And here we pick up in 1 Kings 19.9. It reads in the Amplified Version. He says, there he came to a cave and spent the night in it. And behold, the word of the Lord came to him and said, what are you doing here, Elijah? What are you doing here, Elijah? He said, there he came to a cave. And spent the night there. The King James Version, he lodged there. Then the word of the Lord came to Jeremiah and said, What are you doing here, Elijah? What doest thou here, Elijah? And God's asked us the same question. What are you doing in the cave? When I've given you authority. What are you doing in the cave? And, I, and, and, and cowering under the powers of the enemy. What are you doing here, Elijah? I don't know your name today. I don't know who's watching. But God's asking us the same question. What are you doing here in this cave? What are you doing here in this pit? What are you doing here in this dungeon? What are you doing here in this prison house? What are you doing here in this jail house? What are you doing here, Elijah? I don't know your name, but God is saying, what are you doing here? God said, I have a I got power for you. I got a supernatural power for you to lift the spirit of depression off of you and your house today. He's dispatching a special anointing to remove it right off of your spirit, right off of your soul, right off of your house in the mighty name of Jesus. And you know, when Elijah was in that tomb, I call it a tomb because it feels like a tomb. The depression can feel like you're in a tomb. He was in a cave, but it Caused him to feel like he was in a grave or, or a tomb or something, but it really was a cave. That cave experience can feel like a grave experience. The cave experience of depression can feel like a tomb of depression. But God is here saying today, I came to give you life and life more abundant. I've come to bring you joy unspeakable and full of glory. And you know, when Elijah was in that cave, God didn't give him no, give him no, uh, no self-help advice. He didn't say, oh, Elijah, pick yourself up. He didn't say, oh, Elijah, snap yourself out of that. Mm -mm. He just spoke to him. What doest thou here, Elijah? And you see, even in your situation that you might be in today, even in depression or oppression or season of it, God is saying that I feel for you. He's not condemning you or beating you up or something. Your depression is real. The sadness is real. The grief is real. Yes, you lost a loved one. You, yeah, because it's real. And Jesus is easily touched by the feelings of your infirmity. Hebrews 4.15 said that Jesus is easily touched by the feeling of your infirmity. He's easily touched by the feeling of your infirmity. He's easily touched. Now, how do, how do we know that Jesus is easily touched? You say, well, Jesus don't understand my situation. He's God. He understands. Let's read in Matthew 26, when he was in the Garden of Gethsemane. You're going to find out that Jesus is easily touched by the feeling of your infirmity. He's easily touched. He's, he feels for you. See, he not only does he sympathize for you, feel sorry for you, but he empathizes with you. Sympathy and empathy is two different things. Sympathy simply means to feel sorry for someone. But empathy is different. Empathy means the ability to sense and understand another person's emotions and perspective and experience. In other words, empathy Cause the person to put themselves in your shoes. And today, if you're suffering today from depression or oppression, Jesus put himself in your shoes. He feels for you. He knows what you feel like. He already made the road test. He already walked through what you are going through today. And Matthew 26, 37 reads, And Jesus took with him, in the garden of Gethsemane, Peter and the two sons of Zebedee. 
and began to be sorrowful and very heavy. It says, Jesus took with him, in the Garden of Gethsemane, Peter and the two sons of Zebedee. And he began to be sorrowful and very heavy. Verse 38. Then he says to them, my soul is exceeding sorrowful, even unto death. He said, my soul, Jesus saying this. He feeling for you today. He knows what you're going through. He already walked through what you're going through. He says, my soul is exceedingly sorrowful, even unto death. And the Amplified Version says, then Jesus said to them, my soul is deeply grieved so that I am almost dying of sorrow. Jesus knows what you're going through. He said, I almost, I, I, I am almost dying of sorrow. That came out of Jesus' mouth. He says, I'm almost dying from sorrow. Now, we heard about people commit suicide because of sorrow. We're not talking about that. He says the sorrow that he had could end up in death. The sorrow was so intense that it could kill him. The, the sorrow itself. Not the crucifixion. None of that. He says, this sorrow that I'm going through, it almost is causing death. He said, I'm almost dying of sorrow. So, don't say Jesus don't understand. Don't say Jesus don't feel for you. Don't say Jesus doesn't empathize with you. He knows what you're going through. But he ain't going to leave you right there. He ain't going to just leave you there, him sympathizing for you. He's not going to leave you there, just him empathizing for you. He's going to do something about it. Hallelujah. Come on, let's, let's find out about what Jesus is going to do today. Because this is your day. This is your day to experience joy unspeakable and full of glory. This is your day. This, let's read in John 11, 38. John eleven thirty eight. 38. Remember we said sometimes this depression feels like a tomb, feels like a cave, feels like a grave. Let's look at it in, a, in a, an analogy. You know Lazarus, he died. And Jesus didn't come to see about him for, to, for four days. And when he arrived on the scene, that Jesus, this is Mary and Martha said, Jesus, Jesus, if you had a king earlier, our brother wouldn't have died. But Jesus did it on purpose. He says, if you only believe, you will see the glory of God. This sickness was not unto death, but for the glory of God. What you're going through today is not the end, end of itself. It's for the glory of God. What you're going through is for the glory of God. I know you feel bad. I know you're going through. I know you just came out. Of, I know, I know, but it's for the glory of God. If Jesus can roll away a stone off of a tomb, and raise up a dead man. Jesus can roll away your stone. And bring you out of your grave of depression. Bring you out the tomb. Let's see what he did for Lazarus. In John eleven thirty eight, 38. It says. Jesus therefore again groaning in himself. Comes to the grave. It was a cave. A stone lay on it. Jesus therefore again groaning in himself. Comes to the grave. It was a cave and a stone lay upon it. And Jesus said, take away the stone. And when he had spoken, he cried with a loud voice. He said, Lazarus, come forth. Lazarus, come forth. And I don't know your name today, but today Jesus is using me. The Jesus in me is using me to, to say, come forth. I don't know you. What's your name? Sally. I'm saying, Sally, come forth. Judy, come forth. James, come forth. Come forth out of that tomb. Come forth out of that grave in the name of Jesus. Oh, that's how I'm called Rashi. Ah, we come, we be speaking to your situation. We speaking to that tomb. We rolling away the stone. Oh, God, we roll away the stone right now off of that tomb of depression. 
We rolling away that stone off of that grave of depression right now. We command it to move in Jesus' name. My Bible says we can speak to mountains and command it to be removed in the mighty name of Jesus. We can speak to we can speak to tough stones that lay on tombs. We can speak to that and command it to be removed. We can speak to stones that lay on 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 the on the on the door of the grave. We we command it to be removed in the name of Jesus. Be thou removed. In the name of Jesus, come be like that about Kosa. And we speaking to your soul. Come out of that thing right now. Come out of depression or walk into the joy of the Lord. Come out or come out wherever you are. Come out right now in the name of Jesus. Come out of that stone. Come out of that pit in Jesus' name. Come out in the mighty name of Jesus. The love of God is pulling you out today. The power of God is pulling you out today. Oh, Rashanana Makonde. Oh, in the name of Jesus. God says today, today is your day. Come out of that grave. Come out of that tomb. Come out of that pit in the name of Jesus. The power of God is pulling you out today. You say, come on out. You coming out of that dungeon today. Come out come out wherever you are today in the name of jesus oh the power of god can raise the dead and he can raise you up out of that out of that stupor he can raise you up, up out of that melancholy spirit he can raise you up out of repression he can raise you up he's raising you up the same power that raised jesus from the dead is raising you up right now in the name of jesus christ the sufferings of this present time is not even worthy to be compared to the glory that shall be revealed in you in the mighty name of Jesus. The sufferings, the sufferings, the sufferings, the sufferings, the sufferings of this present time is not even worthy to be compared to the glory that shall be revealed. There shall be glory after this. There shall be joy after this. There shall be praise and worship out of your spirit after this. In the mighty name of Jesus. I'm speaking to you, young lady. God says, come out today in the name of Jesus and walk into the joy of the Lord, the joy of unspeakable and full of glory. He's going to give you double for your trouble. In the name of Jesus, he's restoring unto you the joy of your salvation. Many might be your afflictions today, but God is saying to you today, you, uh -huh, you, many might be your afflictions today, but the Lord is delivering you out of them all in the name of Jesus. Oppression shall be far from you in the name of Jesus. You will experience the joy. This new season, you then this is a new season. Because we said that we may endure for the night, but joy is coming in the morning. It's your morning season. This is a season where you rejoice again. This is a season where you enjoy life again. God saying today, I decree and declare in Jesus' name that Jesus right now has come to give you life and life more abundant. We decree and declare that the latter days will be greater than your former. In the mighty name of Jesus. I speak to that young child right now that's going through the, I, I, in the name of Jesus. We plead the blood of Jesus over them. And it's it right now in the spirit realm. Oh, the blood of Jesus is combating that, that, that oppression right now. In Jesus' name. The spirit of the Lord is delivering your son from depression right now. In Jesus' name. The power of God, the anointing of God is delivering your niece and nephew right now from that spirit of depression right now in Jesus' name. You need to thank and praise him. The spirit of the Lord is delivering your mother and father from that oppressive demon right now. You need to rejoice and praise him. God is saying, put on the garment of praise for the spirit of heaviness. So we worship you, Lord God. Hallelujah. We put on the garment of praise for the spirit of heaviness. We bless you, Lord. Hallelujah. We bless your holy name. We praise your holy name, God. Hallelujah. Clap your hands, all ye people. Shout unto the Lord with the voice of triumph. I thank you, Lord God, the greater is he that's within us than he that is in the world. The joy of the Lord is our strength. Yes, we put on the garment of praise for the spirit of heaviness. God has given you a garment of praise today. Put on your garment. 
Put on your garment of praise. Put it on you today. And open up your mouth and praise God for the great things that he has done. This is the day that the Lord hath made. We are rejoicing and being glad. And we are rejoicing in the Lord always. And again, I say rejoice. Hallelujah. If you want joy, you need to shop for it. You might have to say hallelujah. Hallelujah in the name of Jesus. If you want joy, you might have to leap for it right there in your home. Begin to jump and leap because you will need joy. Leap for it in the mighty name of Jesus. God, we thank you. We're in a new season. We're in a new season. That oppression is behind us. Depression is behind us. Sadness is behind us. The sorrow, the grief is behind us. And the merry heart, that this good like a medicine is upon us. He said a merry heart, that the good like a medicine. Take your medicine. Take your medicine. Take your merry heart medicine. He says a merry heart does good like a medicine. Take your medicine. Take get a dose of the Holy Ghost. <laughs> Hallelujah. Get your dose of the Holy Ghost every morning when you rise up and God allowed you to live. You need to open up your mouth with your own mouth. That their life is in the power of the tongue. And they that love it shall eat the fruit thereof. You open your mouth and, and say that this is a day that the Lord hath made. I'm going to rejoice and be glad in it. You say, this is the day that the Lord hath made. I will rejoice and be glad. In. I will rejoice. I will rejoice. It's in your will. Everything might not go right. Everything might not be picture perfect, but you make a decision. You said, this day, this is the day the Lord hath made, and I'm going to rejoice and be glad. And me and my household is going to rejoice and be glad. And you make a choice. I will rejoice. It's in your will. It's in your, it's in your choice making. It's in your volition. You choose to rejoice. Everything don't have to be perfect. Everything ain't got to be all right. Everything got to be lilies and candy. It don't have to be that. You just make a conscious decision every day that this is the day that the Lord has made. I'm going to rejoice and be glad. And hear that Satan? I'm going to rejoice. So no matter what you do, no matter what tactic you pull, I've already made my decision when I woke up that this day is the day that the Lord has made. And I'm going to rejoice and be glad in it. The devil cannot come against a made up man. When you made up your mind to believe God, when you made up your mind to have joy, no matter what comes your way that day, it has to, you say, get thee behind me, Satan, because this is my day. This is my day for me and my household. As to me and my household, we're going to serve the Lord. As to me and my household, we're going to have joy. As for me and my nieces and nephews, we're going to have joy. You tell the devil that. As for you and your household, you're going to serve the Lord. As for you and your household, you're going to have joy. As for you and your children, you're going to have joy. As for you and your nieces and nephews, you're going to have joy. As for you and your uncles and your auntie, you're going to have joy. As for you and your mama and daddy, you're going to have joy. As for you and your cousins, you're going to have joy. You're going to have joy. You made up your mind. And death and life is in the power of the tongue. And they that love it. Said, eat the fruit thereof. So we just give God praise today. He came to see about us. Jesus understood what he was going through. And he came to see about us. And he said, today is your day that the joy of the Lord will be your strength. When you got strength, you got joy. And when you got joy, you got strength. In the mighty name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Glory to his name. Now, today, if you don't know Jesus Christ as your personal Savior, I'm here today as a representative of Christ just to lead you in a simple prayer. Because without Jesus, there is no joy. Without Jesus, there is no peace. Without Jesus, all you do in life is have darkness and tombs and graves and pits. You, there is no way out without Jesus. So come unto Jesus today. He says, come unto me, all ye that labor. And are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. He said, My yoke is easy and my burden is light, and you will find rest into your soul. Soul rest. He want to give your soul to be at rest. Come on, you know you're tired. Life has tired you out. You're at the point of exhaustion. You are at a point of giving up. Your sorrow is, is almost pushing to you. You want sorrow, you want the sorrow is pushing to you into death. 
it feels like death. Your sorrow is so strong and so so monumental that it feels like death. So you need Jesus to resurrect you. Come on, say this simple, simple prayer with me. Repeat after me. Say, Father, in the name of Jesus, I'm a sinner in need of a Savior. I come to you. You says, if I confess with my mouth the Lord Jesus and believe in my heart that God raised him from the dead, I will be saved. With my mouth, I confess it. With my heart, I believe it. In Jesus' name. Yes, you are a child of God because who's ever called upon the name of the Lord? They are saved. You're saved today. You are a child of the Most High God. Read your Bible every day. Pray and talk to God like you're like like your best like he's your best friend because he is every day. And join yourself with other believers so you can grow strong in the Lord and in the power of his might. In Jesus' name. Well, I'll see you next time on the Prayer Connection where you make a connection with God.